everyone. We're back. The Drew Experience is back. Better than ever, 100% Kyokushin, 100% striking martial arts in your ear, or you want to watch it. First, I want to say as well, thanks to my supporters of uh, Kick, uh, Kyokushin Quebec, which is under uh, Shean Pierre Cataford. Uh, if you're looking to get into martial arts, uh, no matter your age or walk of life, uh, Kick will accept uh, anyone to give you the tools you need to become a better human being inside and outside the dojo, as well as Chick Fighting Fitness. You know. You want to get in shape. It's 2024. We're already 8% done of the year. Mohammed Chick will take care of your needs. He will find a program to make you feel the best version of you through health, fitness, and training. Chick Fighting Fitness, one of the best training programs you could ever get. And today's guest, oof, this is a good one. I've had, I've, we've been in touch for a while. He's always been supporting me. You know, this guy is the definition of a martial artist. Like as a noun, as a verb, he does it and he is one. He is an, a martial artist, a fifth dan in Shorin Ryu karate. He's done kickboxing. He's done MMA. He is now a sensei in Kyokushin karate. Not only a sensei, he is the brand new branch chief of East Canada and IFK. I am so privileged to welcome standing at how tall are you, by the way, sensei? <laughs> six feet tall. Standing at six feet tall. Here we go. Sensei Francois Cressero, <laughs> welcome to the Drew Spirience finally. How are you today? Hey, I'm pretty pumped now. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. I mean, you know, the show doesn't happen, as I, I always have to mention, the show does not happen without the guests because they're the ones that make the show. Because I, I'm not, I, 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 my goal is, as I said, to grow martial arts. And I think uh, my recent trip to Japan really gave me that purpose when uh, I had some people come up to me and say, oh, my God, you're the, the guy that does the show. I go, yeah. They're like, we love it. You know, please come back. You know, don't give up. Don't stop. You've done so much. So, you know, I got that fire again and it's just good to be back. Really nice. Really nice. Congrats on your comeback. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. So, you know, Fred Sensei, um, your journey has been one of it's it's literally a movie, I could say, like based on like the, <laughs> the accolades you have. So how did you get started in martial arts? And before you got into martial arts, were you like doing any other sports? Because think of it, we're in Quebec. So when you're in Quebec, it's either hockey, maybe football, or maybe like other winter sports. So what drove you to martial arts? Okay, that's a funny story. You're going to have some for your money. <laughs> I was, you know, that small little fat kid. I was getting bullied at school. I hated school. I was so shy. I never wanted to go to school. I could remember holding after my my car, my dad's car, not wanting to go to school. It was wow. terrible. Stop psychologists and everything. And my sister was three years old. I was seven. And she told my mother, I want to start karate. And in my seven years old, I was like, you know what? If she starts karate, she's going to be the one bullying me now. She's going to be strong. She's going to be fighting. She's going to be bullying me. So I start karate. You know, and I hated it. But then I hated my class because I was not good. I was all, all goofy all around. Nothing was working. And I just keep on going because my sister was going. <laughs> no way I'm going to give up to my three years old sister, you know? Yeah. And at some point, there was a sensei. He was always staying after class and training after class. And he would every, invite everyone to come and train. And no one would ever stay and train. No one. And I just started training a bit more, training a bit more, training a bit more, getting confidence confidence back in myself, and I started being good at karate, not because I was like the talented kid or everything, but because I was working hard. And that's where like karate changed my whole life. I was getting I was getting good at school. I was getting my confidence back. I was getting good at, at karate. So karate changed my life. And that that's why I'm teaching, like, because I want to give back what I received from karate. Amazing. So, I mean, we, you, your first, before Kyokushin, you did Shorin Ryu. So yes. When you were doing Shorin Ryu, what do you feel is the difference in that style compared with, because we all know Kyokushin is very physical, but what does a, a style like Shorin Ryu bring to the table and how did it help? How does it help complement Kyokushin for you? When I started Shorin Ryu, it was almost like Kyokushin. Hmm. Almost same thing without leg kicks. Yeah. But same, almost the same kata, almost the same fighting rule. It was basically Kyokushin ish okay but at some point in the dojo i was with they they changed their core value so it was not getting 
what was what I was looking from martial arts. And um, one of the, the people I was in Korea with told me, hey, my cousin is having a Kyushin dojo. You want to go and train? And it was Sensei Junior Russo Dojo, which is Chiam now. So I went to his dojo and my jaw dropped. <laughs> and I just like, that's what I want to do from now and so on. So I just switched from Shirinu to Kyokushin and here I am today. That's amazing. And once again, really, it's so nice that East Canada for IFK has a branch chief like you. I think it's uh, you and Riel Gagné are going to do very well, she and Riel. So I'm very excited to see what the future holds. And I think what makes you very special is that you're not, you know, you don't, you're not about the politics. You just want to train. You just want to invite people. And yeah. I see that you bring in guys like Mohammed Benoit Poirier, Por, Sense, Sensei Benoit Poirier. I, I can't say the the name. I'm sorry. I'm, Poirier. Poirier, Poirier. Yeah, I have a cold. Yeah, we're getting there. And uh, you've uh, and also like uh, Tony Savard, uh, amongst many others, and and yeah, Justin Manchin, brother Justin. Yeah. Okay, let me get back to you. Um, so IFK doesn't have branch chief; it's okay. president. It's almost the same thing, but and it's not for his candidates for the old Canada. So we're taking over all over Canada um, with a little small team, with me being the country rep and president. So we have a lot of idea. Things are going to move for us. And it's the thing that I love about IFK, it's non-politic. Okay. So everybody's welcome to train. And that's why we're having all those open training. I don't care if you're Shin Tsuk Shin, Tsuk Shin Kai Ken, Ikeona Kamura. We're all the same. We just want to train and get better. So yeah, that's it. It's the same with Nakamura. I believe Nakamura is small, but we're growing. And I think the last tournament showed that and um, it was really odd. It's a really nice to see that everyone's finally just, it's like, Hey, we're one kanji enough of this. Like there are still like maybe that one organization. We're not going to say their name. That's like, Nope. It's very like, it's our way or the highway. But listen, the Berlin wall fell down. The, their Berlin wall will fall down <laughs> and then everyone will be united somehow. So that's my hope. I'm very positive. And so I do stand corrected on that. So yes, the president, I'm sorry, guys, first show back. You know, I'm so used to saying branch chief, but he's the new president. It's, it's of, the same thing. It's, it's the same thing. Okay. It's synonymous. Okay. But like, and I think what, what I really, and I want to ask you this because, you know, A, you said at the beginning of the show that you were bullied, you had confidence issues and you've done, you've taught um, Shorin Ryu and now Kyokushin, you know, it's a big job being a sensei. You have to cater to different needs. When what is the most rewarding for you when you see a kid that has special needs? Like let's say they're autistic and they're and or they're spe yeah, autistic or bullied. What's the most rewarding thing about being a sensei for well, those kinds of kids? We have the special kids classes only mm -hmm. that I love on Saturday morning. It's mm -hmm. amazing. And at first I was a physical education teacher. I went to university to be a physical education teacher okay. and I do a lot of studies with special needs kids. I wow. love, love, love teaching them. Because when you've got a regular kid, you got to do that much so they get a reward. With any special needs kids, you do that, and it's like they claim Mount Everest. So it's so fun, and they are so happy that you like that you that you help them, and they are so grateful. It's so rewarding for me teaching them because. They just want to learn. They're, they're just open. There is no, but yes, no, no, no. Okay, we do it like that. Bam, bam, we do it, do it again, do it again, do it again. It's so fun. Honestly, I might have more, more fun teaching their class than them doing it. That's I really love it. That's amazing. And like, and you see like how, because they're in their own world, they're in their own bubble. So when they're exposed to what you're teaching them and they see someone who's passionate about it, I that gets them to come out of their shell and then that's when they can evolve. So that, and that's like yep. why... I always say, like, for special needs kids, like, I always tell parents of special needs, like, that I say, don't put them in team sports. Don't, don't, because they, they, you don't know if they're going to, how they're going to react. You don't know how they're going to be around others. It's better if they're in individual sports, like swimming, maybe mar martial arts, especially. Martial like, I'm a very, I'm a very big advocate as someone who has, um, well, now they took it out of the spectrum thing. It's uh, I have what's called had, what's called pervasive developmental delay, not otherwise specified. Could be Asperger's, we don't know. But now it's just called autism spectrum disorder. And I always tell yeah. like parents, if you have a child that's on the spectrum, please, like I say, just try put them in just tr put them in martial arts. Just experiment. Try a judo school. Try a taekwondo school. Try a boxing gym. You want them to like. 
have an outlet so they can that gives them that confidence. Yeah, totally, totally. It's so good for them. And just I think them doing some mitts work, pad, pad. It's so fun, and you see them getting out of their shell. And I love when you do pad, and they start at first class, and they're like, nothing's coming out. And after three, four, five class, you see them going all out on the pad. You know you've done something. You know something is changing for the better. And you, we're starting to do a little bit of comedy with that class. And at first, they're like super <laughs> shy. And now they are going at each other. It's really nice seeing them like evolving, getting out of their shells, getting like hop, looking for all that confidence that we can help, the, help them have. It's, it's really nice. That's awesome. So, so basically, you're a physical education teacher. That makes it even better for that makes it even more better because you have the expertise of like seeing how to teach different students. And I know you've also you know you have a special needs class. Have you ever taught ask? I wanted to ask. Uh, have you ever taught at risk youth like those who have anger problems or those like who could really like it's like they have like they, they have temperament issues. Like have you ever like taught those kinds of yes with with, with uh, high school uh, high school kids. Mm -hmm. Last year we did it. We're not doing it this year yet. Like yeah, last year we did it was amazing class. It's really That's fun. Great. It's really fun to teach. It's really hard. It's a challenge, but yes. if you can help them only that much, that that's something you've done for them. You know, that's so reward rewarding. Very true. And I think with like anger management students, it's um you want to. <clears throat> sorry, as I said, guys, I have a, a bit of a cold. I'm getting over a cold, so don't worry. But with anger management students. It must be so rewarding when you see them calm down finally because they're able to change that switch. You're teaching them, yeah. hey, there's another switch here. Like, this is what you need to do to learn, like practicing kata, practicing kihon. It gets them to focus on that. A breathing, breathing while doing kata, breathing while doing kihon helps them so much because they, they learn to breathe, calm down while breathing, eating the bad, same thing, but learning to let that out. Mm -hmm. in a nice way, in a correct way, in an acceptable way, that helped them so much. That's really good. And I think it's really important because, as mentioned, you know, we don't want these kids, like, wasting their potential, especially in high school. These are, like, the most important years where, you know, they go to college, they're going to go to trade school, maybe they just go to the workforce. But if they have that, those habits that are holding them back, it's like... Yeah they're just going to be another statistic and that's where you people like you come in or say my Shian or any other sensei to say like, Hey, there's something, there's a met, there's a remedy for this. You just have yep. to train in martial arts and you don't have to like become like, like by the book, like, uh, like what you, what a stereotypical martial arts is, but you could use principles as your vehicle to get you to that next level. Exact. Exact. Just, just come and hit the bag. Come and hit the bag a bit and let all that anger, all that stress go out. And then we'll talk. And mm -hmm. after they're ready to talk and they, they will talk to you about what's happening in their life. And then you can switch, switch, just switch what you're saying, you know? Yes. Because now they're ready to go. And if, if, you could, if they could just learn to get that anger, stress, whatever it is, out at the right place mm -hmm. with the good technique at the good time, it's a big change in their life. Very it's true. Bit. It's only a bit. It's very true. Um, the other thing too is, so you met Sensei Junior Russo. He's been a past guest on my show. Uh, and then, so you met Junior Russo and you're like, okay, I love Kyokushin. So what led to you choosing um, IFK? Because I'm sure you there was a lot of organizations you were looking at, like you had Shin Kyokushin, you had uh, Kyokushin Khan, uh, just who, there's so many organizations. But what All led to, uh, yeah, what led to IFK? Them. But at first, because it went kind of bad at the end of my career story, I didn't want any organization. I was like, you know what? I'm going to fly alone. I'm going to do my thing, and yeah. we'll see down the line. Yes. For sure, I get a couple of uh, of offer and whatever. And one day, I saw that Jean Real, which is coming from Primuski, was in town. So yeah. I just I messaged him. Hey, do you want to come over for like a little something? Want to come teach a class? We'll do a seminar, whatever. Yeah. He come and he teach a seminar and we we did kata and kion. It was fun, but okay. I'm a, I'm a kumite guy. I love kumite. Kata was fun and all, but you know it was cool. So one month later ish, and then I'm over. C come over, we'll do something. And we start doing fighting technique. And I was like, 
he's like Yoda. He's small, but he knows everything. And his, his vision of karate, Kyokushin, fighting, Kata, Kihon, just hit mine, like, bam, I just connected with him. Just like that, was talking about angle, moving in, moving out, and all those small little details that add up and do a big difference. But the main thing that get me, like, connecting with Shen Real is how he is. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's apologizing. Oh, I'm really sorry. Can I help you with your mawashi giri? Like, why are you being sorry? You're the Shen. Come and help me. <laughs> he's not like, I'm the Shen. We're going to do it like that. And you do it. He's really like going slowly, trying to help you out. Really, it's just a really good man. He's just a really, really good man. And he, he told me, hey, do you want to talk about IFK sometimes? I was like, yeah, maybe, not sure. We'll see. So at some point, Sensei Pascal, which was in charge of um, IFK for America, which was a thing she had in the United States, called me and he's like, let's have a meeting. We'll just talk. Okay. So she had a out. She had get down, get down, survey. And Sensei Pascal comes to my dojo one night. It's like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. It's super late. We're having coffee and we're talking and we just talk all night till like, Little, little, little in the morning, and we just talk about Kreddy and Kyokushin and IFK, and just, just talk, 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 talk. Those old Kyokushin fights, you know, from back in the days and all of them. And at some point, I said, Pascal said, you know what? We're a non-politic organization. I don't care with who you're training. You could be training with Shin, you can be training with Ken, you can be training with whoever you want. We're just, we're just like a little organization, people working together. We're all trying to get better, but everybody's welcome. And the way IFK work, the, the president, the branch chief, can't impose its thing. It's all vote. We're voting. We're in democracy. Yeah. So everybody's ex exchanging idea. Everybody's together. We're not like on a pyramid. Everybody is on the same line. So that that, that caught my mind. It was like, what? That, that That's something new for me. There's no one in Japan saying to someone that's saying to someone that's saying to one that no, it's not like that. It's like that. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. So that 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 really caught my attention, and then I learned about IFK syllabus, mm -hmm. the Kihon. It's not the exact same Kihon than traditional Japanese association. Um, the late uh, Shian Steve Arneil just changed a bit the Kihon by doing um, how could I say that syllabus Kihon is like. Little movement add up on one of the other. So we're, you're not doing ten tsuki. You're doing morote tsuki, chudan geden. It's like small kata, but on the same spot. Okay. You're not moving around. So it's like you're taking the jodan, chudan, and geden tsuki with geden balai, jodan ki, whatever, and you're putting all of that together, ten movement ish, and you're learning the movement from your next kata before you're learning the kata. So that really cut my physical education head. Teacher was like, oh, that's really smart. That's really smart. I could see myself teaching that. And I'm a huge fan of Bunkai, self-defense. Yeah. I love self-defense. And those more advanced syllabus kions, it's all about self-defense. It's all about those hit that we don't see in regular Kyokushin sport-ish um, dojo. It's all about yes. and all, all those self-defense, classic self-defense thing. So that really caught my attention. My, my you know? I was like, okay, I'm really into it. And then I start talking to all of those IFK guys. And it's, it's like a big family. Everybody's so nice. Everybody's so warm, welcoming. Everybody just want to make you better. They want to learn from you. They want to teach you. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Sign me up. And that, that's where it all began. And now Shiana Real is like two, three, four times a week at my dojo, helping me, helping teaching, helping everybody. So it's a really good ad for us. Really, really good ad. That's amazing. And I'm really happy that you found like a, an organization that works for you. It's the same thing for me. Like, I mean, listen, like, I mean, I had, um, I mean, it's about like where you feel you really fit in. And for me, it was Pierre Cataford because exactly. like, you know, she and Pierre, cause I'm the kind of guy that needs that detailed structure. That's how my brain works. So that's why um, I chose Chien Pierre, but also Chien Pierre, like he was Chien Real, like, you know, Chien Real was very nice to be. He was like a Yoda. Um, Pierre is a very uh, humane person. Like he was asking me about my late mother, my then when my mom had cancer, because I said, look, I said, I want to join, but just got to see what's going on with my mom. And every time he would call me and say like, hey, and he's like, he's like, hey, Drew, 
how's your mother? I was like, oh, I'm like, she had a rough chemo today, but she's managing. And he's like, he's like, oh, he's like, uh, he's like, okay. He's like, I just wanted to call to check in, see how you guys are doing. I know it's stressful, but uh, don't feel shy to call me. And then he took me out for my 30th birthday and we spoke for, it's a sim. I see a parallel, like with you, Rayal and Gaetan. Oh, I had, a, he took me out for, um, for, uh, ooh, for a four hour for a four hour brunch, we just spoke about karate life. He told me stories. He repeated some stories to me that I liked hearing again because it's like, it's like one of those things that when he says it, it doesn't get old. Like I could hear it over and over again. And yeah, so that's it's, a Tian thing. They always say the same story over and over, and we're all listening. Yeah, like he told me some crazy stories, and it was honestly it was awesome. So that's what led me. You know, you have your reason for having life cap, my reason for joining Nakamura. But at the end of the day, I'm always gonna say, I always implore people, like if you feel lost in life and you feel like you don't have an outlet, take up martial arts. If you want to get hard training, if you want to get that, if you want to feel like, if you want to feel like a val, if you really want to feel like you're in like a martial arts movie and actually be benefiting, take up Kyokushin karate. Oh yeah, there's nothing like Yokushin Karate. I tried them all. There's nothing like Yokushin Karate. There's nothing like it. The, the, the feeling after a good Yokushin Karate session training, there's nothing even close to that in martial arts, or in my honest opinion. Well, hey, I mean, you've done it. You've done kickboxing. You've done MMA. You did Shore and Ryu. So, and and I have to. I mean, look, I've I done Taekwondo, and I have to yes, say I you're did right. I did Taekwondo too. It was not yeah. for me. It wasn't for me too because I didn't have like the flexibility and like I had like uh, it was good like it was my I think Taekwondo is a great gateway to enter into martial arts but you have to start it as a kid like to get those kicks going because I'm a I'm a thick boy and uh, I don't kick high so I have to I'm good I'm like a, I like low kicking and I like mid kicking so when I was in Taekwondo one of the teachers was trying to was like making me do these stretches that were really killing my hips and I'm like hey buddy. You're not a physiotherapist here. Don't tell me what I can't nope. do. Not so, wearing bras. <laughs> it does not work for me. That's why I went to Kyokushin. And then I've been there ever since because it's 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 really welcome to all. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's really like all those rules are like family. That's something that you get really in Kyokushin. We're training so hard together that at the end of the day, you always build those little families. People that whatever you're doing in life, whatever you where you come from we're all the same world training hard together so when when you're with your your, your kyokushin buddies your kyokushin family at your dojo you really feel like always like a warm welcome it's yeah. always fun th 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 those family feeling that's something that you get from kyokushin yeah it's so true like i mean like i mean when i started going to the when uh Shian hugo perez invited me to his last tournament like yeah. he's like he's like i want you there for the Drew experience because I want you to take pictures and I was like I could do everything and plus Pierre was there too and that kind of let me like do what I want and it was really nice that like people were like saying like you're you're it's like even if I wasn't competing yes it's like a family because everyone respects each other at the competitions and they're like and it's like especially now what I bring like it was so like rewarding when I had like some kids say to me I've seen your show oh you're the guy that interviews people and it was like it's it was the most rewarding thing ever for me and yeah, then that's amazing. i i couldn't believe it i was like wow it's like i've actually developed i've like i and because i don't like going around thinking oh i'm the drew experience like no like i i go in like i'm an average guy i just do what i do and i don't like to get too ahead of myself because nothing is as good as it seems and nothing is as bad as it seems and that's what i try to take just Go in, do your best, and I let the people talk. I let my the fans and support. I let the supporters talk. That's how I do it. That's the best way to do it. It's the only way, only it correct is. way. It, it is, and I mean, when you speak to expand on family, I have to bring up my Japan trip because I got a message from Shian John Kaidopoulos. He's like, "Hey, I didn't hear about your podcast in Japan," and I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I made some reels, and that was my podcast with the vlog, then the reels, and the posts because I was on vacation. I was like, I needed a vacation. I just wanted to get away, but I was like, I'll do something. But yeah, no, honestly, um, I just want to first of all say. Um, you know, I, for all those who are aware, I mean, as we record this, you know, Mo, uh, Senpai Mohamed Chick won second place in the world in men's heavyweight. And Mohamed only came back to karate in the month of May. And, you know, he's getting tutelage under Xi'an Pierre. But then um, Sensei Francois reached out to Mo and said, can you help me prepare for my tournament? And then what helped, what started as helping you prepare 
you were helping him prepare too. So I just want to say on behalf of the Drew Spirians, on behalf of Kyokush and Boucherville, you deserve a lot of credit for helping Mo as well. Right. So I'm really, so we're really thankful that like you were making him come on Fridays to prepare because seriously, like it's in the short amount of time that he came back to, to, to train those kinds of tournaments you need a year and you helped him get ready like, like this. And I'm very impressed, Frank. Big congrats to him on this thing in second place, second place. Big congrats to him. We're so proud of him. Amazing work. And we're just beginning. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> it's like, and the thing is too, like, it's cause sometimes like, you know, like at first, like he was a bit, I mean, second place, especially in those tournaments, it's not easy. Like, and you know, at first he wanted first place, but you know, I always told him, I go, listen, dude, I go, you proved your, you still have it. And that day was seriously like Rocky four. Like, I mean, it's, it, it still gives me chills talking about it. And like, when we got on, so we got on the bus, like we were playing, like, I mean, I had the song, we will rock you like Andy Hugs oh, yeah. walk out playing in my, uh, in my AirPods to get ready. And we saw all the countries, um, you know, so Chien Pierre, I mean, a pair, like pulls Mo aside, pulls Sensei Karin aside and Sensei Sebastian and he goes, and it's Senpai Chad and he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, he goes, okay, les gars, he goes, he goes, guys, aujourd'hui, faire l'amusement, like have fun, but today yep. it's destruction. And like when he said that, everyone switched, just turned and it was crazy. And uh, I mean, just being in, seeing and being in, the, it's just seeing what, when Mo won his first fight, like we were all like going crazy. I mean, when the second fight, we were all like, oh my God. And then when he won the third, like the third fight was, that was, uh, everyone was on edge. Like it was literally, it was literally like make or break because the Polish guy he fought faked an injury, was faking an injury saying like, oh, like going to the ref, like, oh, he like, he, he's like, <gasps> he hit me in the throat, which did not happen. Like, I mean, I want, I, I, I saw it, like it, he did not hit him in the throat. So then Mo was like, okay, I got to get ready. And the Polish guy had very good high kicks. So then Mo like just went in close on him, started unloading. And um, everyone was, uh, er everyone was like ecstatic after. I mean, like I was emotional. Like I was like tearing, I had tears of joy. And it was really raw. It was really like karate kid mixed with Rocky four, man. Like you couldn't have <laughs> scripted a better day. No one can stay close to Mo when you unleash. I tried it. You cannot stay there. <laughs> you got to do something. Don't stay close when you unleash. That's not a good idea. Your inside leg kick are going to get destroyed. <laughs> I <laughs> run away <laughs> when I have to spar him. And I run away. Like, that's how scared I am. Like, he's, like, like, look, he's my friend. I love him. He's my adopted brother. But when I'm in sparring class with him, I run away. And even and Pierre's like, come on, Drew. He's like, come on. Don't be scared. You know? Even then, like it's like no, because because he he, it it's like fighting RoboCop. You can't win. We're having a lot of fun fighting together because I'm way smaller, so I'm a bit, I'm I'm a bit faster. He's way stronger than me, so it's it's like we're playing check. Nice. It's really fun, really really fun. We're having so much fun on Friday training. That's awesome. I'm really glad you're doing that. But like, and and to speak about that, you're not only inviting him. You've had Benoit, you've had Justin, you've had the Bilodeau twins. Yep. Um, do you feel like these trainings, like, I mean, I'll see, I'll tell you what I think. I think this has helped you. It's helped your school because it's showing people that like, hey, they're bringing the best fighters from Quebec and down just to get everyone better. So I just want to know, like, how it's, how do you feel it's helped you, not only from a karate standpoint, but as a business standpoint, how these fighters have helped you in the business side of karate? As a fighter, it helped me a lot because, you know, I'm not that talented guy. I'm that hardworking guy. Yeah, yeah, I work, I work, I work, I work, I work. So I think all those super strong fighter, way better than me training with me, for sure. You, you got to up your game a bit every time. Yeah. And I'm a bit crazy. I'm always like recording. So then I watch, <laughs> trying to learn again, go working on the bag next Saturday or Friday, trying to correct some little details and going a bit further and further and further. And for sure, it, it helped Karate Mask Coach a lot because when, when you see all those guys trying down to train, you're like, okay, they, for sure they do something good. If all those guys are trusting to go there to train, for sure there's something good or not that bad in Karate Mask Coach. So, yes, it's really good for us. It's really good for them. Honestly, it's it's just about training. It's not about politics. It's not about who are you going to fight ne next or what's going to happen. Just 
come and train. We'll just get better together. You got a nice technique, show it to me. I got a nice technique, I'll show it to you. You're fighting in December or all going to help you to fight in December. And it's, it's like a brotherhood, truly like a brotherhood. I agree. And I, and to go back on what you just said, it's not about who you're fighting next. That's the thing too. Like, there's like this myth that like, it's like you hate your opponent. Like, no, it's like, guys, we're not professional fighters where we have jobs. We have families to go back to the next day. Like the, like the guy that Mo fought in the final, um, the champion, you know, congrats to him. Uh, Muslev Ibrahim from Chechnya, a Lechi Kurbanov student, not only a fantastic fighter, but a fantastic human being too, because, you know, it's like when, I met Sensei Lecce, and by the way, I was starstruck. I'm gonna like, I was like, oh, it's Lecce. I would have been too. Yeah, like Mo saw him. Don't, and... don't push you. Hold on, wishing me, please, please, please. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so it was very humbling because uh, Muslev um, is a. They're very nice, like the Chechen. Like, I want, I want people to know this. Like, from my experience, they might even if they don't speak our la like our language, they've tried. They were using Google Translate. Muslev spoke Amazing. English. He was helping translate, and when. He won. Everyone was going up to Muslev and saying, "Congrats, you know, your congratulations." And then Muslev and Lechi were like, "Wow, Team Canada, we really like you guys." And when at the Sayonara party, um, and when we were they were signing the flag, uh, Lechi was having a like a big conversation with Pierre, and it's like, and Lechi's usually very, you know, very like calm, very stoic. But it was nice to see that side him. And I think he, I, I'm hoping, I mean, who knows? <laughs> I can't say in the future, but if Lechi Kurbanov comes to Canada, that would be amazing to see because he that is one of the crazy. greatest. And his student, Muslev, I think would be amazing to for you to learn from because he's very fast. He's a very, he had a very, very sneaky style. They say that with respect because he, he was very moving. When Mo was trying to get in, he was moving around and, uh, you know, just an amazing. I learned a lot from him too. Very good fighter. Really great. I would love them to come. That would be an amazing seminar. Everybody would be there. That would be so fun. You'll Let's never... hope it's happening. I Let's hope it happens. One day, one day, as as we say in, in Arabic, inshallah or mashallah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever to my it needs. To my Muslim friends, I'm sorry if I got it wrong, but just you know, obviously, you know, I, I'm very. I was. I I love those guys, and you know, the friendships that you form from these events, Frank, it's, it's like, whether it's international, yeah. whether it's national, that's what I love about Kyokushin. It is one big family. And when you feel really? you're part of something, your life gets better. Your life, you see it in like your work, your relationships, how you take care of yourself. That's what I'm thankful about Kyokushin. It's not just about the fighting. It's about the community and the people you meet. It's all about that. It's all about that. And when you go to those tournaments, you always make friends from all over the world, but they're doing the same Kyokushin than you. So when you talk to them, you got already something in common. And everybody that I know in the world of Kyokushin are all great people. They all got yes. backstory. They're all there for something. It's always interesting. You're always finding common point. And that's that's way better than all the training you could have. All those relationships, you help getting each other better. Oh, I do it like that. You do it like that. And it's everybody's bringing the, everybody up. I, I love I, that. I, I agree. Like, for example, like I, um, I met one of the, so the Dutch team was there and I think you saw my photo. So their can show was Gerard Gerdo from UFC one. I was like, what? Like Gerard That's Gerdo. Crazy. I was like, and I, I was like, I've always wanted to get that guy on my show. And like, I met him and uh, the guy is like the very unfiltered, but the nicest guy ever like does super super cool like you know i asked on point i'm like so what happened to taylor Tuli's tooth that you kicked oh i gave it to the hall of fame they needed it because it was like the first knockout ever i was like it's like oh my god like the guy the guy just had Crazy. like he had a humor it was amazing and the dutch team was uh, i was asking them i go okay so when you say about how they do karate and i was like saying okay so and one of them i was like this is how i do my low kick and they were showing me, you know, this is how you should do it in the Dutch way. And that was amazing. So I like how you said, like, that's how you form these friendships. Because if they see you're curious, yep. they'll help you. Yeah, I do. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I met Shan Sean in the United States. Shan Sean yep. Shanker, who's yep. having a dojo in the New York State. Yes. And we're super great friend now. And most of the time I train, I record, I send it to him. Hey, Shan Sean, help me out. And he's doing the same. And we're just... There's a couple of friends there all over the world. We're just sending videos of 
bag, mitt, or pad, whatever, and everybody's giving their opinion, and everybody's just helping each other. And maybe one day you're going to fight that guy. They don't care. They just want to help you out. You're just trying to help them out, and that that's so so nice and, that, and so nice community. Everybody's like building everybody up. It's very uh, true. Just, and so much friendship to build. So much. The one tournament I would love to see, though, in my lifetime is I would love to see a Canada versus USA tournament. That would be something I'd love to see. Like, and I mean, look, it, there's no, it, it, it's not like there's, it's not because like we're better than them or they're better, but it would be nice to like really connect the US scene with the Canadian scene and then help Kyokushin grow in both countries, in both Canada and the US. Because I think, you know, if we can show like, especially what we do with the Americans, Americans are going to see that, and then they're going to start taking up Kyokushin. I, that's my feeling of doing a tournament like that. Okay, I can say that, but let's just say it's a work in progress for now. <laughs> we're, we're putting a lot of time with that with Hyun Chan. It's it's a thing we've been talking about. He's in charge of Un United States for FK. Yeah. I'm in charge of Canada. So we're having a meeting at the end of February, and that's a thing that we would like to do. Well, that's UFC the did that. Like the, the UFC yep. did a Canada versus USA back in March 2006. Uh, and that's where GSP fought BJ Penn and David Loiseau fought Rich Franklin. So, I mean, like, it's not like there's no, it's not bad blood. It's just, as I said, it's to help elevate Kyokushin as a Everybody. whole. Because with karate, I want to ask you this. Like, what's your take on a league like karate combat? Like, what's your thoughts on that uh, karate league? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm mixed feeling. They have some great fights. And sometimes I'm looking at the fight and like, what am I looking at? Yeah. But it's... We'll see where there it goes. What's your thoughts on karate combat? I'm I'm curious. Um, I'm the same way like you. I mean, I like it, but I do not like the fact that they do not allow low leg kicks like uh, with Kyokushin. It's like saying it's like yeah. telling Khabib in the UFC, okay, Khabib, don't wrestle. You have to strike only. Like that's that's the thing. So I know there's thoughts that they might change it. Like I've been I've been a very loud voice about it because I want to be someone that like eventually uh kind of commentates and like is able to talk to the fighters there like i want to be the voice for kyokushin but i'm a bit too loud with that because you know i have my thoughts but listen i gotta be that voice i mean you know i have to be that voice for for the whole kyokushin like if you're gonna let us fight in that league let us cook let us show our yep. talents i understand you got... kyokushin fighter you need low kick you need There's low kick. No kyokushin fighter with a low kick it's nonsense it's it's that's the thing and now so that's the thing like if karate combat lets now they have they, right now they have Joe Miyahara there, but if yep. if you just tell them, tell us, hey, look, we could do the low leg kicks. I guarantee you, Fra Sensei Frank, the amount of fighters from around the world that are gonna go into karate combat for Kyokushin, it's gonna dominate. Like, and I'm not trying yeah, to sound sure. biased. I think a lot of Kyokushin guys are gonna give all the Shotokan guys a lot of the, sh the Shito. I would Ryu. love to bring back my old kick kickboxing knowledge. Yeah, put it with my 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 Kyokushin knowledge and go fight there. I would love it, but. You need low kick. You need low kicks. You really need low kick. Until it's, they it's, allow it's it. That thing. That's the thing. Like, I mean, I, I prefer, like, I, I would say just go to K1 at this point or, like, go to, like, yeah. go to K1 or go to Glory. Like, that's where you'll be able to really utilize your Kyokushin skills. Yeah. Hey, let, let's go back a few minutes ago. You made me think something that they do in the United States that we should do here mm -hmm. maybe one day. Uh, I fought uh, last August, yeah, in New yeah. York, and it was a boxing and Kyokushin one match gala that that was really fun. Wow. So there was Kyokushin one match in ring, and in between it was boxing match. So that bring two worlds together, and we build so much respect for boxer and boxer build so much respect for us Kyokushin guy. It was really fun. It was really a fun event, and everybody all the crowd looking there was so nice nice show for them. You see those Kyokushin guys going like bare knuckle eye out on each other in the ring. And then you got those box, boxing match with all that boxing science was really nice, really fun event. I that, love fighting there. That's awesome. I like what you said, and I think that's good because I think the more we <clears throat> try to do crossovers with other like arts, it's opening the door for everyone to see what we do, and then that puts eyes, and that gets people to take up Kyokushin, and that's how we grow. And I'm a firm, and I I agree with you there. That's a that's a fa I, I can't. I don't want to swear because you got a lot of. Kids are gonna watch this. That's a fantastic idea for the for all the for everyone. I agree with it. I'm I'm on board with it. We 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 learn by co by collaborating and sharing, and it's and because at the end of the day, no one loses. 
Yeah, and even fighter we're talking about, we're looking at those jab box and well, maybe I should jab more in Kyokushin. And they were looking at the way we were going to war and they were like, oh shit, we need to go to war a little bit more. So <laughs> even for us, fighter was fun just to talk and exchange idea and technique, even with boxer, it was really nice. I really enjoyed it. Amazing. So obviously we're one month into 2024. You had a very successful 2023 and your 2024 is just taking off like a, like a jet plane with like the, with the, on the stock market. Um, what's the plan for this year for you as a sensei for and for you? What's the, what's the goal? For, and goal uh, for as, 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 as it is for the dojo, we're just trying to build up. We're having a nice advanced belt exam at the end of uh, June. I'm really pumped for that. So we're really nice. working hard. We're having an IFK summer camp in Rimouski, which is going to be amazing. And in April, we're having Shan Eddie Adabiller, which is coming from Swiss. Uh, he's an amazing human being. Eighth Dan in Kyokushin. But at first, he is um, teaching to police officer, the special forces yeah. in, in Switzerland, how to defend with herself with Kyokushin. Wow. So that's crazy. I can't wait to have him. I met him at the BKK, BKK last year. And we we talked like all night at the second round party. I didn't talk to anyone. We just sit on the table and I talked with him. I was like, it was amazing. <laughs> so we're having him here in April. It's gonna be honestly, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be really really nice. I want to know how he's putting Kyokushin in all these forces. That's crazy. That's, That's amazing. Really like fun. he's and not and not only and the, here's the other thing too that I noticed what you said there. Switzerland is the homeland of Andy Hug. So yep. Think of it. It's like maybe Switzerland is a Kyokushin Mecca because of Andy Hug and Shianetti and Shianetti. Oh, Jonas. Do you know Jonas? I don't get his family name, his second name right now, but he's a really good fighter from IFK. Ro Rosen? Jonas Rosen? Yes, that's it. He's from Sweden. He's from Sweden. Yeah, I had him oh, on my show. Yeah, before. yeah. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Amazing fighter, though. What yeah. a fighter. He's, he's really he's amazing. He really he really is an amazing fighter. Um, Very, like... He's also an amazing human being because he's got like that dry personality from Sweden. But I love yeah. him though. Like, and he's like, and it's and honestly, like, I, I'm really hoping because he's just open to fighting everyone. I'm really yeah. hoping, um, because I know for Nakamura they're having the friendship tournament on the 28th of September, open to all organizations. So I'm really hoping some IFK guys come down, you know, because as mentioned, Nakamura, we want to work with everybody. We want to grow just as much as everyone. And I mean, we're not we're not like a restrictive organization. So, I mean, we want it. We just love karate. We love uh, building uh, the Kyokushin spirit. But yeah, you guys have some good fighters, man. You got that. Yo Jonas is a good one. I think he could do very well in, in the world. He's amazing. He's really fast. He's really fast, and his hands are getting really dangerous. Oh, really made me think of a boxer now. The way he's moving and the way he's eating with him, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. And he's an amazing human being. I talked to him at the BKK, and he's really nice. Really nice guy to talk to. Oh, salt of the earth guy. Like, I mean, I could I DM him, and I'm like, yo, Jonas, how's it going? He gives me like, and like, he'll just tell me like what's going on with his life and like in the dojo. Uh, no, him, him and his dad, like, he comes from a very good family. His dad, uh, Tobias is a very, uh, is a phenomenal human being as well. And, uh, just, yeah, Jonas Rosen, man, guys, if you're in Sweden, make sure to check out the Rosen dojo because they are the best at what they do. And he's got some good female fighters too out of that dojo. Yeah, for sure they do. Yeah, for sure they do. Yeah. And then the BKK too, those female fight, they were some really impressive fight. Those girls are going at each other, man. They're just like toast, toast, bam, 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 bam. And they're so quick. And their eye kick are so quick. They're like nose to nose, boom, eye kick, high kick, <laughs> go hit it, and all those crazy to look at. I was really impressed. Amazing. And you know what else who I saw too? I recently saw uh, Sensei Michael Zimmerman at Hugo's tournament. Yes. And he also said, like, I asked him, I said, oh, how's Sensei Frank been doing? And, he, and, and when Sensei Michael gives his approval, of of uh of you that's a very good sign and i was like he's like he's like he's like sensei francois very good he goes very good guy he goes he's he's Hear learning him. every day he's learning every day and uh and he's and whatnot so yeah but that's awesome man so uh, he's coming sometimes on saturday to help us out he's still got a lot of uh trick to show, show us amazing amazing well and it's really I funny when he's teaching he's like no not like that do it again he's like really like into it Really fun right. to work with. 
No, that's awesome, man. So that's amazing. And I'm really glad that Mike is helping you and uh, and whatnot. So he's helping you on Saturdays. The dojo is just growing and all. So I'm really happy for you, Sensei Frank. And honestly, man, I'm really happy we got to do this finally because yes. it's really like I've been wanting to do it for a while. And since you were helping Mo, I said, I got to get Sensei Frank on. So Sensei Frank, where can people connect with you if they want to see what you guys do? We're everywhere. So it could be Facebook, Karate Mascouche, could be Instagram, Karate Mascouche, could be our website, IFK Canada website, um, phone, email. We're just everywhere. Not on TikTok yet. Working on it. <laughs> Amazing. Well, guys, make sure to check out the dojo and Mascouche that Drew Spirits gives his stamp of approval. You follow this man. He's a great, he's not only a devoted father, he's a devoted teacher. He's changing the lives of, of children from all walks of life. He's open-minded and he just wants to help people grow through martial arts. So you make sure to follow this man. And if you like this conversation, you hit the like, share, subscribe button to the Drew Spirience. We're 385 subscribers on YouTube. We want it. I want to grow it. So make sure to hit that. Merchandise is coming soon. I'm going to have an announcement with that on hoodies and t-shirts. I just got to talk to my designer for it. Um, but Frank, I want to thank you so much once again, man. I'm so happy to kick off the with having you as the first guest. And if you ever want to come back on and whatnot, or you want me to share stuff on my page that you're doing, send it my way. I'll, I'll do what I can to share it, okay? Oh, thank you. Hey, guys, go subscribe. This guy's amazing. Do it. Give some <laughs> thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Do it. Go, go, go right now. Come on, go, go, go. <laughs> amazing. Let's show, show me those likes. <laughs> exactly exactly well hey man i mean i want to thank you once again and um obviously you know uh it's as i said it's it's a, it's really a big honor to do this and as i said we'll be in touch we will be in yeah, touch for sure and the door is always open if you want to come train come see us anytime i definitely will if i have a day off like on a friday i'm gonna see i'm gonna definitely try to come to mascush in the morning and i could definitely like you know make some content if you want so as yeah, i said for sure. anytime. I, I just want to help Kyokushin grow. Like my purpose is now helping Kyokushin grow. For what this art's given me, I want to give back to now. That's amazing. It's so good for us. All right. Have a great one, Frank. Hey, thank you very much. Have a good day.